Welcome back to the channel everybody and I'm not really going to be doing much work on the car today because um, the weather's kind of cooperating up here in the north and I need to clean up my yard. Most of the snow is melted up here. So I'm going to be going over kind of what I'm doing here. I got to get rid of this old Buick frame and a bunch of the other stuff off the Pontiac. I wasn't able to get the roof or anything cut off of that yet so I'm not going to worry about that but for this load. So I'm going to kind of show you what I'm going to do with the frame. Well, I've already removed the front control arms and stuff off of this side. I need to finish taking off the control arm and everything off of here. I'm not going to use the springs. Uh, those were no good. i got to pull the drive shaft and rear end out of this. Even though this is open rear end, I'm still going to keep it just in case. Um, and i got to pull the rear uh, bumper brackets off. The little cushions. So that's what I need to do and get this frame loaded up on the trailer over here. So then I got to come over here and I got a stack of metal. I got bumpers, hoods, and I got that clip I got to throw away. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Well, I got the frame loaded up, but I didn't get to work in time. They said it wasn't supposed to start raining or snowing until like 3 today. And it's only like 10.30 in the morning, so... <sighs> Weatherman wasn't quite on time, but I kind of knew it was coming. But it's good to get that frame up on the trailer, though. Get that out of the way. So, I'm going to... think I'm going to fire up the wood burner here in the garage and maybe take some suspension parts off this Buick just to pass the time a little bit and uh, get that all sorted out. I'm going to show you what I've been doing on the Buick. Oh, Well, I got the motor all put in here. I did build an engine mount. It turned out really nice, but I've decided to go with um, something with a bushing in it. These are solid mounts, and I don't want this thing to rattle like crazy. So, comfort-wise and stuff, I think it's going to go better, but they won't last as long. So, I just did one prototype. I didn't do one on the other side. I'll come around front here. Ugh. I do have the heater box in it. I got to do some more adjusting and stuff on that. 
Um, I got to clean it up and get it all. I want to take it apart and clean it up. So that might be one of the other things I do. Um, obviously, the front suspension is completely off on the driver's side. I'll probably take the passenger side off. I was going to put the Buick mounts on this because of the way um, I was building the solid mount, but I decided not to. So I'm going to go back to the V8 Pontiac, you know, Chevy mounts. I got one laying there. The other one's laying over here. So I want to put those back on. I'm going to get a universal motor plate or universal motor mount kit for this. So I know it'll be exactly right and it's not going to rattle with the rubber insulator so i'm going to get clean it up a little bit and i'm going to get, get going to get to work i'm going to show you something else i did the other day because the whole shop here was just full of pontiac parts i built this shelf here so i got the old buick motor sitting down there which is garbage i got buick parts and suspension parts up there kind of mixed in trim pieces up there and all the way up top, I got the red seats. So that turned out super nice. I got two tilt columns over here. I think I got a set of, I got another column down here. You can't see it. But I got all my other trim stuff, my Buick parts, console and whatnot. So shop's looking a lot better.
Well, as you can see here, I got the front suspension all taken off now. It didn't go too bad. Um, I did screw up a little bit there. I should have taken the sh lower shock loose before I dropped down the lower control arm. Because um, there could have been spring tension on that and I was kind of messing around in there. So, you don't want to mess around with the a compressed spring, that's for sure. I've been hit by one before doing a strut job and that did not feel good so uh, kind of screwed up a little bit there it's kind of sketchy but it's all uh, taken apart now so now that I got a lot of the suspension taken apart there I'm uh, gonna start taking apart this heater box so I can clean it out and whatnot I probably should have done that when I was out of the car but it was taking up room and it's not really bothering anything right here so what I'm gonna do is show you here what I got to do is take off these top bolts here. There's four, and then there's a bunch of perimeter bolts that run along the top here. So I'm going to zap those out real quick. So I got the top off here. I got the EVAP core off and all the, uh, the accumulator dryer and pressure switch and everything. It just came off all as one. I left that connected. Just laying over there. That stuff's not going to be able to be used. I might be able to flush the uh, evap core out but uh when i switch that over to one 134a um, i'm gonna have to flush that out real good because the r12 oil and stuff won't mix with the pag oil and it'll mess up the system so they use totally different things back in the day so and then i got the heater core here all this is one bolt right here i got it loose so and there's a little clip down at the bottom pulls right out I'm going to flush this out. It doesn't look like it was leaking or anything, so I'm going to reuse this. I'm going to show you the inside of the box here. Um, I didn't see this before, but I have focus here, maybe. It's cracked right there. So I'm just going to do a little repair on that. I'm not going to do that today. But I think I got a really cool idea how to dress up this heater box, uh, make it look pretty cool. So I'm going to mess around with that because I have that broken one. I'm going to mess around with that and see how that one looks. Just do a little area and dress this up. It might look turn out to look like a uh, composite carbon kind of look. So that's what I'm going to try to go for. But it really doesn't all look that bad. I'm just going to get my vacuum out, vacuum this all out, wipe it out. It'll be pretty good. I need to take this uh, box out all the way though, because there is a foam, or a little bit of foam sticking out right here, 
foam insulator that goes in here and I need to get a new one so it seals really nice up against the car then I do need to fix right up here um, I'm just gonna get my uh, slide hammer here and pull this out because the firewalls really dented it right up here so I'm guessing that was from one it had an accident because I noticed when I was bolting this in look how straight this box is straight it doesn't move because it's composite but see how this is warped right here that's a big and stick the tip of my finger in there so I'm gonna have to fix that so I don't break the box so I think that's gonna be kind of a wrap for today um, didn't really get much done uh, as much as I wanted to but I don't want to take too much apart I think I'm just gonna rebuild the front end here get that all together and then I'll go back to the rear and do the rear section so um, all the idler arm pitman arm all that stuff is getting replaced I'm just gonna throw that away so um, the upper control arms, I don't know if I'm going aftermarket or sticking with the uh, stock stamped uh, control arms. I mean, we'll kind of see cost-wise and whatnot. Um, the upper bushings on the Pontiac uh, control arms are in really good shape. They're not cracked or anything. So I might just throw some ball joints in them, clean them up, throw them back on the car. Um, but a lot of the bushings and stuff are going to get replaced. And I'll kind of show you when I do that, when I get that stuff here. So um, if you have any questions or anything, leave a comment. Please like and subscribe to my channel. The more likes I get and the people subscribe, the more I can do to this thing. I am really hindered by, uh, you know, funds and whatnot. This is just a everyday guys garage build I mean most people don't have at least I know tens of thousands of dollars laying around to build a car I mean I'm building this on a budget and I'm doing everything myself so I don't even have a floor really in my garage I'm working on dirt but still keeping the car spirit alive that's what I want to keep going here keep the car spirit alive a lot of that I feel is going away and young people around just don't have the same stuff that even I grew up with uh, growing up in the early 80s or late 80s 90s stuff I mean I remember wor working on the car with my dad and I enjoyed that and now I can't even get my son out of the house he just wants to stare at the TV or watch YouTube or something I mean yeah I'm making a YouTube channel but I'm doing stuff too so I'm trying to stay busy I mean I enjoy this stuff so uh, get out there, work on your cars or trucks, and just keep trying. That's what I say, trial and error. This is all trial and error for me. I've never built anything this big before. I mean, I was a mechanic for a lot of years, worked on a lot of different things. I mean, doing a ball joint on a Ford pickup truck is totally different than doing all this stuff. I mean, I've done bits and pieces, you know, rebuilt front ends on Chevys and Fords and engine work. I've done all that stuff, but doing everything, it's a challenge. And especially when you're swapping 80s equipment and, and using mid-2000 parts on it and doing all sorts of things. I mean, using 350 turbo trans, LS base, 5.3 truck motor out of an 07 Silverado and Doing all this stuff, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you have to compensate for. So get out there, wrench, and have fun with it. I mean, things aren't always going to go your way, but just keep at it. That's all I can say. Just keep at it. And join me next time. Hopefully, I'll have some more stuff to do. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.